Okay guys, welcome back and today we're going to be doing a video on connecting the computer to the layout and I've been playing around with the signals here. If you watch the train go by now as it enters the next block it will go red. So that's what I've been pretty much doing this whole time, working out how the program works and uh, so we'll be, we're talking about, we'll talk about how the lights work and the block sections and uh, detection sections as well. So let's get started. So the software I decided to go for is the Railway & Co software. This is the Gold Edition. I'm running it in demo mode at the moment. And I've set up all the different blocks and detection sections on the layout. And you can actually see here, as the train travels through this block and as it travels making its way to this block. So it's a sort of rudimentary transponding. Um, it's, it's quite a good program to use. There's a little bit of a learning curve, but once you get through that, everything's pretty good. So we have a set of points here, or a turnout, and on the outer loop we have another set of points. Now this outer section of track is broken up into three detection sections. So here's the bit of track we were just looking at right there. Now if I go into block 5, I go to properties, and I go into block editor, you can see the three detection sections I have there. So that would be the stop zone, the break zone, and the stop zone. So I've drawn up a little example of what a single block may be. You don't have to necessarily do it this way. And I've broken it up into three detection sections. And if the train is traveling, say, in this direction at operating speed, it then hits the brake zone, starts to slow down, then hits the stop zone, and there it stops, and there may be a, a signal light here or something. Now you have stop zones at both ends, so you'd have trains running, trains could run in either direction. So we've got the train coming around full speed now. It's going to come hit the brake zone. Slow down. It's coming into the stop zone now. All these zones are adjustable how far you want the train to move into each zone. And there we go, it stops. Okay, so here's another example that you may use. Um, this one has a single block, but there's only going to be two detection sections now in this block. So as the train enters this way, it hits the run zone, hit full operating speed, brake zone, then it hits the stop zone and therefore the train will then stop at the station. So if you are setting up your layout to do block detection and computer control, you'd really have to think about what actually uh, do you want it to achieve and that will then tell you where you need to put your detection sections. Alright, so I'm quickly just going to set up a signal light, so you simply matter just drop an icon of a signal light where you want it, and then you go to the properties, and you need to just punch in the information here, which you can get from, which I got from the, uh, the SC8C, because that controls the, the signals. So all this address comes in the instruction manual here. Now this combination down here is, it has to be quite specific, I found that this combination See the, the ones that I have highlighted are the only way I can get it to work properly. So to get your signal light to change colors you need to set up a series of triggers or conditions to do that. So I'm in the trigger column and I'm saying that to get it for it to go red block 2 will be occupied and to get it changed to yellow block 3 will be occupied. So if you have a whole bunch of signals to set up there's quite a lot of information that needs to be fed into it so it works properly. So that pretty much wraps up the video and I just wanted to show you a shot now of the table on its side with all the wiring now completed. So if anyone's got any suggestions for some videos they might want me to make or an idea they want me to explore, you know, just leave in the comments below. So thanks for watching.